welcome back or welcome to the channel. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. My name is T and this is my channel, Crumpus Tea and Sewing. So if you're tuning in for the first time and you have not had a chance to subscribe to the channel, please make sure that you do so by hitting that red subscribe button below this video. And if you like this video, make sure that you give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to push the notification bell so you can receive notifications of all my videos when I post them. So in today's video, I want to share with you the dress that I made for Thanksgiving. And this is a dress that I made with the Rivermont dress and top pattern by Cashmere Patterns. Now I've made this dress pattern before, uh, about two years ago, and I also uh, did reviews for uh, the dress and the top. And uh, both of those reviews are on my channel. I'll make sure that I put the link to both of those in the description box below so you can go over and check them out. For the peplum top that I made, I also did a comparison video where I compare the Rivermont uh, peplum top to a McCall's pattern. So it's a really interesting review. Please make sure that you check it out if you, had a if you haven't had a chance to do so already. All right, so with this particular, with this particular dress, I decided to go with um, the cashmere dress for this fabric. So here is the pattern. Um, and as I said before, you have two different views. You have um, your dress, which is view A, and you have your um, peplum top, which is view B. And as you can see, the sleeves, you have two different options for your sleeves. You have a shorter sleeve and you have a sleeve that's a three quarter sleeve. I decided to do the shorter sleeve. Um, however, my shorter sleeve is a little bit longer than um, what you see here um, on the model. In terms of um, supplies or materials that you would need, um, it calls for mid-weight ponty knit or lightweight um, scuba knits with at least 40% stretch on the cross grain. Um, the supplies you need are a ballpoint or stretch needle, thread, a twin needle, which is optional, lightweight knit interfacing. Lightweight knit interfacing is going to go um, on your facing there. For a 45 inch wide fabric, you're looking at about three and a half to three and five eighths yards of fabric. It just depends on what size you choose, but that's what you're looking for for the dress. And then for uh, view B, again, 45 inch wide fabric, you're looking um, at about one and seven eighths yards of fabric to two and seven eighths yards of fabric. Again, it just depends on what type, what size you choose. Uh, for 60 inch wide fabric, you're looking at about two and a half yards of fabric to two and three quarters of a uh, yard of fabric. And for view B, you're looking at one and five eighths yards of fabric to about two and a quarter yards of fabric. So it doesn't take that much um, fabric, even for um, the largest size on here. It just, it's still under four yards of fabric. So um, it's a really nice pattern simple easy to make for advanced beginners um, i'll put the all the links uh, to this in the description box below oh let me tell you a little bit about the instructions here it comes with a little instruction booklet and um, this instruction booklet is very useful and helpful it has like your cutting layout guys it has sewing terminology for those of you who might be still you know at that advanced beginner stage and uh, need to know a little bit more um, about the sewing terms and stuff to follow along um, in the book it has um, a little um, instructions on how to fit yourself, how to measure yourself so that you can uh, choose the appropriate sizes. Um, it tells you how to construct the garment together. Um, it gives you instructions on how to put the darts in. It gives you instructions on how to apply the interfacing, how to attach the sleeves, how to attach the skirt to the bodice. Um, it's just a really great instructional um, booklet. This pattern so, is a pattern that is designed for plus size people. Um, however, uh, with a few adjustments, 
even people who are who does who do not fit in that category could actually um, still make this pattern and I'll tell you about that because um, although I'm on the cusp of uh, being plus size uh, for the lower part of my body it does not fit in that category so it's really easy to make changes to this pattern and um, to uh, bring that pattern bring um, the waistline in or bring the um, the bus in or whatever so that you can actually make this pattern now I chose a size 14 which is for the finished measurements um, the size 14 is a 38 and an eighth of an inch for the bus now this particular pattern comes in cup sizes so you have your CD your EF and your GH for your cup sizes um, and because it's a plus size, again, you're not going to have that AB on here, but you do have um, um, a range of different cup sizes. The size for the pattern comes in size 12 and it goes up to size 28. And so that is uh, for the bust 36 and a quarter of an inch for a size 12. And it goes up to that size 28, which is 51 and 7 eighths of an inch for a size 28. Uh, for the waist, you're looking at a 33 and an eighth of an inch for size 12. Going up to a size 28, you're looking at about a 48 and three quarters of an inch for your waist. For your hips, depending on uh, which view you cho choose, view A or view B, because remember the peplum top, you're going to have a little bit more room. But for the dress, you're looking at a 44 and 3 eighths of an inch for the hips for size 12 and it goes up to a size 28 which is your 48 and 3 uh, quarters of an inch for your hips now for the hips this is where i had to do um my alterations and adjustments uh, because i am an inverted triangle that's um the shape that i am uh the bottom of my um body is uh not it, it's it's disproportionate than the top part of my body and so i'm not going to really fall into any category um with commercial patterns or pdf patterns i uh usually have to choose a plus size or a larger size for my upper body and a smaller size for my lower body and so my measurements are not listed on this pattern at all for the lower part of my body so I had to grade in quite a bit taking off about three and a half inches or more maybe a little over three and a half inches for the hips so the hips of the pattern or for me that I recreated is more like a size 10 or maybe a size eight <laughs> just because I just don't have any hips at all and like I said my body is disproportionate in that way so I had to do a drastic um, uh, grading drastic grading from the waist to the hip area in order for this uh, garment not to be too loose in that hip area the other change that I had to make was to the pocket I'll put some pictures throughout the video so you can see the previous make that I made with this particular pattern and then you can kind of see the difference between the make that I made two years ago um, in contrast to this particular make. Now when I made this garment two years ago the pockets I could actually put my hands all the way into my entire hand up to my elbow all the way into the pocket and it was very deep and that's because the pocket bag is really big because it covers a, um, a an array of different sizes and so i knew going into the project that i would need to um, uh, cut off a great amount of that pocket bag so i kept the shape of the pocket bag and the pocket facing i just uh, basically shortened it I um, took off about three, maybe four inches from the bottom of the pocket bag. But again, I kept the shape because this is a, um, this pattern, um, the facing, you, you're you actually going to see it because it's an open pocket and it also, it's a slanted open pocket here with, um, with your facing is exposed. So uh, you don't want to, 
you know, make any adjustments to the length or the size of that here because you want to make sure that it matches up. So I just, I just took off, um, the bottom of the, of the pocket bag, like I said, about three to four inches. The pattern calls for a facing that extends down into the arms, which I um, always think it's just quite interesting. I've never seen a pattern like this until I started working with this pattern here. And I'll go ahead and put a little clip in here so you can see what that looks like. So the, the facing here, as you can see, you're going to put your facing right sides together with your um, the bodice once you go ahead and um, join the front and the back shoulders together you're going to go ahead and put that facing on and then you're going to stitch that in place at three eighths of an inch and then after you stitch that in place you're going to go ahead and clip all your curves and then flip that back in um, uh, with wrong size facing so then once you flip that facing into the inner part of the garment with wrong size facing, you're going to go ahead, press it together and everything. And then you're going to base the um, armhole area of the um, shell of the garment to the armhole area of the facing of the garment. And then you attach your sleeve. Um, actually, you don't attach your sleeve yet. You, you go ahead and attach your skirt and then it gives you instructions on how to attach your sleeve from there. But it's a really interesting um, way of putting in the facing. I thought that it was pretty cool. Uh, the pattern also calls for a scratch knit, inter uh, a scratch knit um, interfacing that you're going to apply to the facing which um, gives your neckline a little bit more stability as well, which is also really um, cool and neat. Uh, the pattern calls for 12 darts. So you have two center bust darts. You have two front waist darts on the bodice. You have four um, skirt um, darts on your front skirt. And then you have two darts on your back skirt and then you have two darts on your back bodice so it's um it's quite the pattern and to think last time i fully lined my skirt and so i actually did 24 darts um but yeah it's besides the darts everything else is um easy peasy and it goes together like a dream uh the pattern also has a one and a quarter inch hem at the bottom of the skirt so you have a little bit of a wide hem which is really fun um for your sleeve i believe that's a five eight seven inch hem for your sleeve it's just a really nice pattern what i really like about this pattern is it just depends on the type of knit that you choose um, this is a jersey knit but it's a digital print knit and it's a knit that i feel like um it has kind of like a work attire appeal to it. And so I feel like this is definitely a dress that you can wear to work or you can wear to church. So it just depends on where you're working. I'm talking about like office type work. Um, I think this would be a really great dress for that. Um, also, I feel like, again, depending on what type of uh, knit that you choose, it could be a, a pattern that you use to create a dress to go out um, on the town or, you know, like I said, work, church. It's, it's just a pattern that I feel like is very universal. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to keep it simple and basic with the sleeves so that if I wanted to layer it, um, because this is, uh, we are uh, approaching the winter month, um, it really would be best for me to actually keep this simple and, and um, uh, like a basic sleeve so that I can layer it. So I really like the choice that I made. I love the fabric choice uh, paired with the pattern. I feel like it's um, a really great combination here. So I, again, recommend this pattern. Um, I'll leave all the links to my previous videos in the description box below. And I'll also leave the link to the cashmere 
um, website so you can go over and check this pattern out. Um, I believe it's like 17 US dollars or something like that. Um, yeah. So again, I'll leave those links in the description box below. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this video was enjoyable for you. If it was, please make sure that you like this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell so you can receive notifications of all my videos when I post them. All right, again, thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a blessed week. Until next time, everyone, stay creative. Bye.